chapter 6.3 exercise 11 through 18. This section of the book has to do with parametric equations and we're going to do the first part of this exercise set and mention problems 11 through 18 and handle the four odd number problems 11, 13, 15, 17. We're going to eliminate the parameter and identify the graph of the parametric curve and so in a parametric equation the, the parameter what is a parameter? Well, the parameter is the is the variable, independent variable for both these equations, t. And in eliminating the parameter, we are going to go from a parametric to rectangular equation. And rectangular means an equation, a graph of just x and y in this case. The strategy here to eliminate parameter is see where we can replace. Well, we can see right here in the right equation that y is equal to t. So therefore, we can take this y here in the equation to the right and replace this t here for the x equation or that's one way of doing it or even a better way to do it I believe would be to take this equation x equals 1 plus t solve for t how do we solve for t subtract 1 from both sides of this parametric equation so t is going to be equal to x minus 1 so now we can replace this x, this t here for the y equation with x minus 1 and rewrite this equation as y equals x minus 1. So this is going to be our rectangular equation. And does this equation look much like the parametric equations? Yeah, kind of. Let's go ahead and graph this equation. Uh, quick sketch. We have simply we have a and y-intercept of negative one. So we can come down here to negative one, and then our slope, our rise over run. Let's say x y is 1 over 1, so we go up 1 over 1. So our graph parametric equation converted to rectangular is going to look like this. And then the arrow is in the direction of t increasing. So this right here at 0, at, at uh, x equals 0, well, that's when t is going to be equal to I believe negative 1, isn't it? Or excuse me. Uh, for x is 0, it'll be t. So t equals x minus 1. So that's going to be t of 0 minus 1. So that's t of negative 1, t of 0, and so on. Next on number problem, 13, we have the parameter equation x equals uh, 2t minus 3 and then y equals 9 minus 4t. In this case, we probably have similar degrees of difficulty. I think I'm going to want to solve this equation on the left, so we'll have a y equals format on the right. It just might make this thing a little easier to work with. And so if we put x equals 2t minus 3, we can solve for t by adding 3 to both sides of the equation. So we have cancellation, we have x plus 3 equals 2t. And then dividing by 2, we have, we have t equals x over 2 
plus 3 halves. And now we have a solve for t equation that we can do what with? We can just put right in place of our t here. So, just bringing this down, we have y is equal to 9 minus, we have 4, and in the place of t, we have x over 2 plus 3 over 2, and then that would be it. So if we can just simplify, or in this case, expand, we're going to use the Struve property of algebra. We're going to take negative 4 times x over 2. Well, negative 4 over 2 cancel to become negative 2, so we have minus 2x, and then negative 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 2. Well, negative 12 divided by 2 is minus 6. So we're going to have y equals, combining like terms, we'll have negative 2x, and then 9 minus 6 is plus 3. Now, does this equation here look anything like the, the first parametric equations we had? Well, really not very much. One thing we can do, I'm going to talk about what can we do here. I'm going to go ahead and just sketch graph here. Okay, we have an xy coordinate plane. And in this case, our function is going to be negative 2x plus 3. So we can go up to plus 3 on the x-axis, and we put, there's our y-intercept, and our slope is negative 2, so that's down 2 over 1. So that's going to look like the graph is going to look like this, right? Slope of negative 2. So that's what this is going to look like. Okay, what direction is it? Probably in the direction that I, I drew down here. But then we're going to go ahead and we want to find between t equals 3 and t equals 5. So we're going to find the x value. So if we say uh, x equals 2t minus 3, and we substitute in 3, we have x equals 2 times 3 minus 3, which equals 6 minus 3, which equals 3. So we're going to start out at x equals 3. Okay, that's the piece of the function because of this time limitation between t equals 3 and 5. And then we're going to take x equals 5 seconds, t equals 5 seconds, 2 times 5 minus 3 which is 10 minus 3, which equals 7. So we're going to go down to x equals 7. So 4, 5, 6, 7. So we're going to go down here to x equals 7. So quite a bit ways down here. So this little piece that I'm now overlying in red is the piece of our rectangular equation that is defined by this set of parametric equations because of the limitation right, between t equals 3 and 5. And to, to verify, we can graph, if we graph this equation, y equals negative 2x plus 3 in the calculator, and graph as a parametric equation, this x equals 2t minus 3 and y equals 9 minus 4t, we can check our work in that manner. Next item of problem, 15. We have x equals t squared and y equals t plus 1. Well, what we can do here is solve for x and then or solve for t. And then when we have t solved for, we can replace in terms of x 
into the second equation with the y equals equation. So we have t squared equals x. What we do is solve for t. We take the square root of both sides of this equation. All right? And the square and square root cancel each other, so we have t equals, we have square root of x. Now, is this what it is? Well, not entirely. When you take, when you solve by taking the square root, what do you have? You have a plus and minus. And so we got to take this, this plus or minus and replace that t with plus or minus square root of x. So therefore, we have y equals plus or minus square root of x plus t plus 1. And what we do is we bifurcate here. We have, we have two functions here because we need two functions to be able to grasp it. y equals plus square root of x plus 1 and also y equals negative square root of x plus 1. And then graphing this We have our xy coordinate plane, and we have square root of x plus 1. That's going to be our standard square root equation, but starting at our y-intercept of 1. So we're going to be looking like this. And then our negative equation is going to be like this, our negative side. So I'm just going to draw in red, negative version. Okay, so we have a, a right sideways opening parabola. And as far as the direction, um, I have arrows pointing each way. Well, arrows are only going to point in one direction, aren't they? Well, we can just, uh, we're going to have plus or minus t squared plus or minus. So I guess really the thing does go both directions. We press y equals t plus 1. Well, at 0, we have right here. So I, I think we are going to be going uh, reversing direction as, as t increases. So I think we're going to be going like this. Okay, and this arrow, these arrows I'm drawing in the direction of t. Our last unknown problem that we're doing is this one. We have x equals t, y equals t cubed minus 2t plus 3. And this is pretty simple. All we have to do is replace the, the t in the right equation with x. So we have y is equal to x cubed minus 2x plus 3. And that's, that's going to be our parametric equation. It's really... There's really not a, a, a cause for this, to, uh, other than we can put this in a graphing calculator and look at it. So let's, let's do that. I'm going to press Control i at graph. We have the equation here, t cubed minus, or x cubed minus 2x plus 3. So x cubed. minus 2x plus 3, and we graph, and we have this cubic function. So we have our, looks like we have our x-intercept at negative 2, we have a relative maximum at negative 1, around negative 1, comma, 4. Okay, so it's going to look something like, like what I'm going to draw here. Okay, we have two, three, four, one, two. So the, the graph's going to look something like this. going to come up to a relative maximum that I'm pointing out in red. We have a y-intercept of about three and then a relative minimum 
here, and we have a x-intercept about negative two. So the thing is going to come like this, come up, hit a relative maximum, cross at the y-intercept, come down, hit a relative minimum here, about 0.1 comma two, and go like this. And you know, the time direction is going to be the arrow I'm putting in place right now. So anyway, those are the odd number problems worked out. Good luck on your even number problems. And thanks for viewing.